I bet you that scientist took Crystal. I'm gonna go save my buddy. Well, the torture chamber is actually a growth chamber, and what it does is it gives us an opportunity to control the things that outside in the field where trees and plants grow, things like light and temperature, they're changing all the time. Well, in our controlled growth chamber, we can keep light and temperature constant, and we can add gases uh, such as ozone and other things that we might want to torture the plants with. Crystal, Crystal, are you in there? It's me. I came to save you from Dr. Francine Hanselstein. Stu, how'd you find me? I got your signal. You're really, really smelly, you know. Thanks, buddy. How are you going to get in here? She's got this place on lockdown. I brought the bugs with me. Well, plants release a lot of different gases uh, other than just oxygen. And they release what we call VOC. Um, plants release thousands of different gases into the air. Some of them are hormones, just like humans have hormones, um, things like ethylene, which helps uh, fruits to ripen and helps control certain developmental stages. Then they emit uh, warning gases, gases that will alert some of their natural um, uh, na predators of plant herbivores, for instance, things that might eat or attack caterpillars. Um, these gases can help the predators of those caterpillars find where the caterpillars are on the plant. And uh, other gases that are used to attract certain types of animals, like um, floral scents that attract pollinators to flowers and help with reproduction. Um, and there's also warfare compounds that plants can excrete directly into the soil, which can actually kill other plants that are growing near them um, and help them in their competition. and their antenna are um, sensitive to certain compounds and the plants can detect where the gases are getting more and more concentrated and so they follow what we call a concentration gradient um, and they literally just go from the low concentration to the high concentration and that's how they find their source.
insects themselves are sensitive to the actual mixture of different chemical compounds in the gases. So some, some plants, you know, like a rose, emits its characteristic smell is a combination of all these different individual compounds, and when they all combine, they make that unique smell. And so some insects are sensitive only to a certain combination of gases, and so if a plant is not being attacked, it might not emit that combination. It might emit a different combination, but it won't attract the bugs. Once that plant is under stress, the plant can start emitting these stress signals, and that unique blend and ratio of individual compounds is what allows, is what attracts the insects. Well, the bugs attacked me because uh, they, they started to pick up on the defense signals that the plant was emitting, but they also, part of the equation is that they detect the things that I'm emitting. Um, for example, uh, a caterpillar that's attacking a plant, when that plant calls for a predator of that caterpillar, the insect or the wasp or whatever it is that picks up on the signal is attracted not only to the stress compounds from the plant but also to compounds from the caterpillar's poop.